Mr. Youngblood Hills, <laughs> Band of Brothers. He played, uh, of course, uh, Daryl Shifty Powers. Peter, welcome to Black Sky Radio, and thank you very much for doing this. Oh, yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to talk to you guys. I wanted to let you know, I kind of keep my eye on the chat room while we do these interviews, and everyone's just going uh-huh. bonkers and saying hello to you. So I want to let oh. you know all the love you're <laughs> getting from our listeners right now in real time. <laughs> oh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And mine, mine to them as well, as always. Now, we've heard a lot of different stories about the audition process. Did you... Hmm. Uh, Go out for Shifty Powers. Did you audition for his role for that role specifically, or did you go through uh, a bunch of different reads for a bunch of different characters? Well, what I you know what happened was there was I was in London, right, and I had I had been on a film. I'd made a film with Matthew Leach, funny enough, uh, and there was the casting director on that film. He was working uh, with the casting director uh, on B- Band of Brothers, the American casting directors, and they were they were um, they were over, you know, checking out and, and basically seeing who they could cast in London. Um, and I guess I think there might have been one character I read for as well. But in the same moment, they they basically saw me when I was in there reading, they saw me and they were like, you know what, why don't you, you know, you're, you know, I'm from literally an hour from, from where Daryl, from where Shifty was, uh, from in, uh, my mother is from, uh, Northeast Tennessee up in those mountains. So, you know, he's, he was from Prince Cove, Virginia, which is an hour away. So they, you know, I think that they knew about that and, and, um, they basically thought I could do a southern accent or try and work with his his uh, his accent, and that was really important. So they gave me his. I think they gave me an interview of, of him, and I worked with it a little bit, and then I went back to audition, kind of mimicking mimicking him, and um, and uh, kind of doing an audition, you know, with 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 uh, with his voice in mind. So that was kind of how it, how it happened, and. And they, yeah, so it worked out that way. Now uh, I know uh, from reading the uh, the wiki page on uh, Daryl that he did pass away last year. Uh, yeah, he did. And from uh, one of our other interviews, uh, I you got to go hunting with him. Is that correct? Yeah, I. You know what? I have. I you know basically because he lived not far from my mom before before we actually started filming Band of Brothers. Um, I went to visit him, and we hung out. And I stayed with him in his, uh, up at his house, and you know we became friends. And he, we we went and shot his. I shot his M1, um, and we went. You know he it was he had at this time he was. It's called mon, uh, mon It's basically when the eye. Um, you you he, you're slowly going blind because you're you can only see it peripherally. So he, um, you know, he, he wasn't able to, you know, he was old, he was old, you know, so I right. mean, he, you know, hunting in terms of going out and, and shooting, <laughs> shooting some squirrel or, no, we didn't actually go and kill anything, but we went and, and went and, uh, you know, shot, uh, shot his M1 and a couple other, uh, rifles he had. And, and then he took me on a journey, um, it was amazing. I mean, he was, even though he was going blind, he could still dri- he would still drive his truck, right? So, <laughs> so he would like I mean, I don't know how he did it and I was like, Are you are you sure, Shinty, you want me to you're gonna drive me to you know, the I think I don't know what park we're going, but he literally we would drive through these mountains. I couldn't even drive at that time. It was I think I don't even know if I had my license or I can't even remember but we would we would like go through these mountain turns and he would be driving at I don't know what speed and I was like how are you doing this you can't even you can't even see me <laughs> but he was uh, you know he was a uh, he had his his other senses working there he was you know he was he was a I guess he was a quarter Cherokee uh, so he you know he was connected to the the land in ways that you know most people aren't. Now, so. were you one of the? Uh, I'm guessing that you were probably one of the only guys uh, in the series that actually 
shot an M1 uh, live round before it all started and quite possibly ever? Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, we, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was definitely very blessed, very lucky to have that experience and connect with him and, you know, his daughter and Margot and my mom started to become friends. And, yeah, I mean, I, I had that sort of connection was even though it was interesting because it, there was an element of a it was because I was connected uh, on a in a kind of a deeper way with this character who was alive who you know who I was telling his story it then affected how you know you know in in terms of the writing of this of the of the uh, different episodes you know if they had written if they wrote for instance there was a, there was a time when they wrote a an episode in episode six, I think it's episode six, and where Shifty was basically singing in a foxhole, or he was kind of, you know, doing something with the guys, and and he had been written in throughout that episode, and basically because I know Shifty wasn't going to be, he, you know, his time in those foxholes in Bastogne, they weren't, a, you know, it wasn't pr- a pretty times for him for anyone but specifically you know I know that what he went through was it was a real it was a real tough time and uh, and so I I really didn't think it was I didn't think it was appropriate to basically have him in that in that scene and you know and I was having to tell his story so I I basically you know you know talked to the producer I said you know I couldn't do those I couldn't do it and uh and in the end, I, you know, I, I was taken out of that episode, pretty much. I think there's only one. Um, but, you know, that was, so that was the, there's the pros and cons. One, as an actor, I was kind of, you know, limited to what I, what I was going to be doing because this guy was alive and I was, you know, I was, I was there to portray him, you know, as best I could. Now, uh, the real uh, Daryl uh, joined yep. the, the service with, uh, Popeye win at the exact yeah. same time and went in together and went to jump school together and, and joined the yeah. paratroopers together. Uh, were the, were you close with Popeye win on the set? Well, we were. You know, we were friends. We started to be friends. You know, just because our characters were. Um, and you know, he, you know, he actually came in a little bit later. So we had already been to. I believe we'd already been to boot camp. I'm not certain, but this is, you know, so there was already a, a, a I think a, we had already bonded, you know, or those, you know, those who had bonded and those who were connecting, already forming relationships. But definitely, man, he, you know, he's, you know, we were connecting Shifty and Popeye. We, we, you know, that's what we needed to do. Yeah, and then one lung McClung came on much later. He, he came on much later. One lung was with Shifty's, you know, they were like partners in crime. They were there. They, they were both the scouts, right? They were the lead scouts. So they would, they would tell me stories about how they would, at nighttime, they would literally go out by themselves and capture soldiers. And they would do things, because one lung was raised on a reservation. He was half, I can't remember what, what tribe, but he was half Indian. And he supposedly the, the stories go he could you know he could he could see he could see in the dark you know he could like see things you know everything lit up for him so what would happen is that shifty could hear everything he had these big ears so he could hear everything and so what they would do is they would work in tandem and they would you know one would have the really good eyes and shifty would have the really good ears and they would just you know and sometimes they would, he would tell me that McClung would play jokes on him and like they would be crossing a, like some sort of little creek and with, you know, and, and then uh, because, because sh- uh, one lung could actually see, he would like lead Shifty into the, <laughs> into the creek and like get him stuck in there. <laughs> and, uh, it was like they would have a, they had a riot from what I heard.